Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome everybody back to the third, three, and final uh, Lost Boys movie review with Lost Boys The Thirst, which is actually a good sequel. Um, definitely several steps up from the fiasco known as Lost Boys The Tribe, which again, um... I would say it's a it's a carbon copy of the original. It's basically a remake of the original, um, and I think most people would agree with me. You know, very very forgettable movie. Um, you know, what a waste of of time and film and everything. This, on the other hand, I think this was pretty good. Um, you know, I, I first saw this when it first came out on DVD. I was like, wait, they're making another one. The last one sucked, and then I heard some you know some good things about it and, and people tended to like it and i was like okay you know i'll give it a rent and i rented it and actually really you know really like this i will admit i do really like this this is how you do a in my opinion this is how you do a directed dvd sequel you know this movie it's 80 minutes but it cuts at a good pace I like the story. I like how it wipes out the tribe. There's no mention of any of that. They change some of the stuff that happened in that movie to better suit this one. Uh, you know, Corey Feldman's in the whole movie, which is nice, you know, and he gets to be a badass and, you know, he's fighting vampires and, and doing what he's supposed to do. You know, this was, this is how you do it. Now, the unfortunate thing about this, I think this movie has kind of been long forgotten. Um, this came out in 2010, so nine years ago now, and I never hear anybody mention this or talk about this one. I think this movie kind of came and went. It had its fans, and now it's kind of shoved under the rug, so to speak, and that's unfortunate because, again, I think this is how you do a directed dvd sequel. You know, same with, you know, like Tremors 2. I thought Tremors 2, although Tremors 2 went to some theaters, it had a small run. Um, you know, this is how you do it on a lower budget and do it the right way, in my opinion. And, uh, yeah, I actually watched this not too long ago. I, I watched it again. It, it had been a while. And I still actually enjoy it thoroughly. I really do. Um, again, I know I keep saying it, but, you know, this is how you do it. This is how you do a directed DVD sequel. You know, and that's the thing that really bugs me about the directed well now it's streaming and, and Netflix I mean there's still these movies are still coming out on blu-ray and everything but the uh, the main selling point is the streaming stuff the Netflix and, and Hulu and all that um, you know there's just so much opportunity there to do movies like this there's so much you know you're working with a smaller budget, so you have to plan things out. You have time to to do things. It's not like a theatrical movie where you got to hit your timelines and you got to get the movie out of, on the day that it's supposed to come out and all that. You know, direct to the B movies, so to speak. You know, they have a lot more time to work with and everything. I mean, granted, you know, these movies are filmed very quickly and everything, but there's a lot more creativity and freedom to do stuff, and that's you know. What really frustrates me about, you know, Lost Boys of the Tribe and, you know, the Jean-Claude Van Damme movies and that kind of thing. Like, you know, a lot of those movies could be better. Like, a lot of them could really work better um, because you have more time to focus on it. It's not like, you know, Godzilla King of the Monsters where it's got to come out on this day and it's got to make this amount of money and, and all that. And, you know, all that bullshit that goes with with doing, you know, huge budget movies like that. Um, you know, with a movie like Lost Boys, The Thirst, you could sit back, figure out what you want to do, figure out how you want to do it, and not really have all those big pressures of a, of a huge theatrical film. You know, that's one thing that I really like about this movie is, you know, they took their time. They, you could tell in the movie, again, it's only 80 minutes, but I, again, I think it cuts at a good pace. It doesn't go too fast. It doesn't go too slow. You know, I thought the the action was consistent in the movie. There was there was some good action. Um, I really enjoyed Corey Feldman's performance. I like some of the other cast members, including Jameson Newlander, who comes back as Alan. 
and there were some nice touches to the first movie. You know, uh, the first line from uh, Alan is, holy shit, it's the attack of Grandpa Munster, which in the first movie, it was Eddie Munster because it was a little kid, and I liked how they brought that line back, but they updated it for who they were going after, you know? It just, you know, this was, I think this movie was a big love letter to the Lost Boys fans, you know? Um, I That's just me. That's what I think. Um, it definitely feels like it when you watch it. So, yeah, I mean, this movie definitely pays respect to not just Lost Boys, but some of the older, you know, vampire films from the from the 80s and stuff like that. This movie just feels like a nice little tribute. And, yeah, I mean, I know I'm already almost six minutes. Well, what's the movie about? You know, I know I, I do this, but I'm, you know, especially one that's done right like this, I get passionate about this. And there's nothing wrong with being passionate about your hobbies. You know, it's good to be passionate. It really is. But, hey, what do you know, right? So, Lost Boys the Thirst, again, everything about the tribe, gone. Deader than a door now. Thank God, because that movie's awful. We can we can collectively wash that movie out of our minds um, with this movie, which is great. So in Lost Boys, The Thirst, uh, Edgar is living in a trailer and he's about to get evicted, which is hilarious because like the landlord knocks on his door and he goes, "Fucking vampires!" Like Corey Feldman, you could tell he had a lot of fun with this role. In, in this movie. Um, he was also an executive producer, so I'm sure he got to get a little more creative and everything, which is awesome. I'm glad that, you know, he really got to, to work on this one in a acting and a producing capacity. I'm sure he made some decisions and kept the movie focused. And, you know, that's awesome if that's what really happened. If he was, if maybe, because sometimes when actors take a producing credit, it's kind of for show. but um, you know, I think with this movie, Corey Feldman actually helped out working on it besides being in front of the camera. Um, so Edgar's kind of down on his luck. You know, he's got, you know, issues and everything. And he gets an offer to uh, go to this island where this giant vampire rave is going to happen because this lady, who is actually a writer of this lady here, she's at, who's actually, she's actually a model. Um, she's married to the dude from the A team that played the crazy guy who was also in, uh, hardcore Henry. Uh, what's his name? Sharto Copley. I think that's his name. Yeah. She's actually married to him, which is pretty cool. I didn't know that until now. Um, but yeah, she's gorgeous. She's like a South African model. I was looking up her credentials and stuff. So her brother is being held by these vampires and they're going to sacrifice him um, because it's a blood moon and the vampires are giving out this drug, which is vampire blood, um, called the thirst, which is where the title comes in. And so Edgar gets hired by this lady to go. At first he refuses and then, you know, he talks to his brother who Alan Frog, who in this one, he's actually got turned into a half vampire in the beginning of the movie, which I'll get into. So he ends up going and Alan tags along with him later on and they go to this island. They start wiping out all these vampires and they find out that they've been set up. Um, the lady's brother is actually a vampire and they're not actually brothers and sisters. He just got her to convince Edgar to come kill all the vampires so this guy could be the only vampire left like basically have edgar frog as his personal vampire slayer um but edgar ain't putting up with that shit neither is alan and you know they wipe him out to save the day and that's it you know again it's a very simple story it did something different from that other piece of shit sequel the the tribe you know this was an actual sequel it wasn't a carbon copy of the original movie. It wasn't a remake of the original movie. This did it right. This did Lost a Lost Boys sequel the right way. You know, this is as good as it's going to get. I mean, you know, again, back in the 90s, there were discussions to do 
a sequel called The Lost Girls, which actually became the comic book. Um, the second Lost Boys comic book, which I have, which I will do videos about, don't worry, um, after these. I will get to those, because I'd, like I'd like to, I haven't read them yet. I'd like to read them and then go and review them. I've never reviewed comics before. Maybe this will be new. Um, they actually used that idea for the comic book, so I'm looking forward to checking that out. But, you know, in terms of a movie, this is it. And the fact that this is directed DVD doesn't bother me. Like, again, you know, this was how you do it, in my opinion. This was done correctly. You know, it wasn't the thirst or a lot of other of these sequels that are like, you know, Half Past Dead 2. Or I'll always know what you did last summer, or you know, Urban Legend, Bloody Mary, or you know, all these name only direct to DVD sequels that are garbage. You know, this movie did it right. It took its time, and it shows. It really does show in the film. And you know, the digital look of the movie and the special effects and stuff that really doesn't bother me because. I felt that this movie made up for that. You know, I really did, you know, feel that, you know, the story and the execution and everything made up for the the thing, the lesser things in these type of movies, you know, the special effects, the shaky cam and all that. Um, you know, I can, if the movie's good, I can kind of overlook that. Um, you know, shaky cam has gone away, basically. You know, they've kind of really gotten away from that. Which I like. I mean, CGI still looks like fucking dog shit. But I'm glad they stopped, you know, doing this with the camera every time something happens. You know, it's a very refreshing feeling. Because, again, for years, for some reason, they thought it was a good idea to do a tracking shot. And then just, you know, move the camera all around and give everybody a fucking migraine when they're watching the film. Um, but, you know, I can overlook that for a movie like this, which is well done. Um, you know, again, it's 80 minutes, but it cuts at a good pace. The movie opens kind of, the way that it opened was cool because it kind of took a line from the first movie where Alan or Edgar, excuse me, is claiming that, you know, uh, yeah, there's, you know, vampires in the Senate and Congress and this and that. So in the opening, it's a flashback where Edgar and Alan are in DC and they're fighting this congressman vampire and they make Alan drink blood and he becomes half vampire and the movie picks up here where Edgar and Alan's relationship is strained but it was cool because Alan he's a half vampire but he only feeds on animals and he becomes a taxidermist which was a nice touch it was a nice little tribute to the first movie where grandpa was a taxidermist and you know it was it was nice to see that and that's like you know a lot of movies and tv shows where the vampires are good guys they feel like angel angel you know fed on animal blood to keep him going uh forever night was like that um you know several good guy vampires did that in, in different incarnations and stuff over the years so that was cool you know and there's a nice little tribute to Corey Haim in this movie because he passed away in between the tribe and the thirst. He was supposed to be in this. Uh, I was reading, you know, I remember reading some interviews and stuff with him that he said, yeah, we're going to do part three and I'm going to be in it. It's going to be great. And unfortunately, he, you know, he passed away before that could happen. But there's a nice little tribute where... Uh, Edgar visits his grave and he puts the Batman 14 on it. There's some they show some scenes from the first movie, so it was a really nice little little tribute to Corey Haim there. You know, again, it, it's it's always sad when your childhood favorites and stuff pass away, and and that was yeah, you know, that was very upsetting to hear that. But you know, hey, he's in a much better place than us, so can't really complain about that part. But we all miss him, but. You know, after that, once Edgar accepts the mission and he gets all these cool weapons and stuff, you know, it was cool. It was like, you know, this movie was very action-oriented, which was nice. I mean, there was action in this one, but this is more of your standard vampire, you know, a little bit of comedy, a little bit of drama, teen-type movie. You know, this kind of went Blade, 
you know, in a way, which I like. I'm not complaining about that at all. You know, I do love the first two Blade movies. Um, I'd say Blade 2 is my favorite, but, um, you know, this definitely went in that kind of direction, which, again, I'm totally fine with. I thought that was cool. Um, yeah, I, you know, he doesn't have it here, but he's got, like, this grenade launcher that's, like, shoots holy water bombs, and he's got this grenade that has stakes in it, which is cool. Um, the ending, the vampire drinks water, and then Edgar blesses it because he becomes a priest, which he talks about in, in the movie, which I thought was pretty cool. And the dude, like, blows up, and Edgar goes, yeah, fuck you! And I was like, all right, cool. You know, that was pretty cool to see, you know, in this. And yeah, I mean, they're fighting with swords and all this other stuff. There's this and this movie, what another thing that was cool is it touched on a lot of tropes. Like, there's one dude who's like a reality TV star who goes on the mission to kind of get popular again. He ends up getting killed, which is funny. Um, the whole, like I said, this lady writes like Twilight books, and Edgar's like making fun of her. And he goes, You know, there's nothing sexy about being a member of the undead. And, you know, they poke fun at that. And, the one character that like helps set up the rave, he's like a blogger, so he's like filming with his camera and everything. So it really touches on some of the modern stuff. So I liked how they threw that in with the old school vampire stuff. You know, that was pretty cool to see, you know, in my opinion. But yeah, you know, um really like this. Again, this was how you do it. And the only thing that I really don't like is they have kind of an open ended finale where uh edgar and this girl who's his friend she works at like the comic book store and i liked how they incorporated that too the comic book stuff from the first movie um you know she's talking about well you know i didn't believe in vampires but now i do and what about werewolves and edgar's like well werewolves aren't real and she looks at the camera and her eyes glow when the movie ends i'm like well you know they never made a part four you know, they never followed up. So I was like, really? Like, you could have... I, I know what they were going for. They were just trying to keep it open-ended in case they were to do another one. But, you know, they did not. So, I mean, this movie came out nine years ago. And now they're trying to do this TV show. So, and I'll do a video about that. But, I don't know. Like, I really do not know why they did that. But if I could make... And maybe one day I will. I, I really would like to learn how to edit better and stuff because i would like to create some of my own like fan versions of some of these movies like with this one i would cut out that little bit of the ending you know that part um but there you go you know other than that i actually again i really like this i, I watch it every october i'll do you know a double feature of these i watch this one more because it's a classic but i do watch this one from time to time i still enjoy it you know i think it's a it's a fun directed dvd sequel and in my opinion it did it correctly you know it didn't it didn't bullshit its way as as a sequel like the tribe did this was an actual sequel which was very nice and again i like how they wiped out the tribe because in this one they talk about michael and star uh edgar says there's no way that they're going to help me after what happened and then they talk about how sam became a vampire and edgar had to unfortunately kill him which, again, I know why they did that, because, of course, Corey Haim passed away. But had he lived, it would have been great to see him in this. I'm sure they would have teamed up and had something going on there. Like, they would have, I think they would have did it the right way, you know, in my opinion. But, oh, yeah, here it is on the back here. It says, armed with double barrel, holy water, balloon launchers. Yeah, that was the, the cool gun that he has. Like, the weapons were really cool when... Yeah, I kind of want to, to be honest, I kind of want to watch this again. You know, I know I just watched it, but I kind of want to maybe in a couple of weeks here or something do a double feature because, yeah, now that I've been talking about this movie for almost 20 minutes, I actually kind of want to watch this again. So there you go. And there's features on here, which is nice. Um, they do like this video blog thing about the movie. Um Corey Feldman in character does stuff about the weapons. Um, there's an interview with Corey Feldman and Jameson Newlander, which they're actually going to be at a convention together. I don't know if I'm going to go, but we'll see. 
And then there's a thing about vampires that Charisma Carpenter from Buffy and Angel hosts. So, not bad on the features, you know, in my opinion. For a little movie like this, not bad at all. But yeah, at the end of the day, I really like Lost Boys, The Thirst. I think it's, unfortunately, it kind of came and went, but I'm glad that I gave this movie a chance. And I'm definitely happy that I have the Blu-ray. You know, this is definitely a movie that I'm going to enjoy for years to come. You know, I really thought this was well done. And it's a shame that it didn't get more recognition. Maybe one day. I don't know. But anyway, um, I hope that you guys enjoyed my reviews of the Lost Boys trilogy. Um, next, I will do, I'll just talk about the TV show, like my thoughts and all that. And then the last Lost Boys video will be about the comic books, once I read them, I definitely want to read them and uh, and do a video about them. So until the next time, once again, as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care. I'll talk to you guys soon. See you.